Following Joe Biden's State of the Union address, many lefties and Democrat activist types, establishment journalists started praising the president, saying 78 percent of voters approved of what Joe Biden had to say. Well, there's a lot of problems there. First, the poll wasn't showing 78 percent of voters. It was 78 percent of likely voters who watched the State of the Union address. That's a big difference. I mean, how do you poll someone who didn't watch the State of the Union on their opinions about the State of the Union? The reality is Joe Biden's ratings were extremely low. And naturally, you're going to have way more Democrats actually watching the State of the Union than Republicans. So in which case, the polling will likely favor Joe Biden. Now, since then, Joe Biden's polls haven't really improved. And I'm not here to play any propaganda games. The reason, why, the reason why we may not be seeing any direct movement in Joe Biden's polling could just be that it's too soon. And also, Joe Biden getting the lowest ratings for the first official address in 30 years? Well, the internet could play a very serious role in this. A lot of people didn't watch the State of the Union address because, well, around like a million and a half watched me and Kean Bexty and Lauren Southern and Seamus Coughlin uh, get drunk. Well, not really, but Lauren got drunk. A lot of people chose to watch that and said, so technically you could say, did those people really watch? And the other big issue is obviously I have no problem with saying America loved that speech from Joe Biden. It wasn't so much a state of the union address. It was more like a campaign speech, as many people have noted. But I have no reason to come out and be like, people didn't really like Joe Biden's speech because he just ripped off MAGA. It was diet MAGA. So if Joe Biden wants to come out and be like, we're going to secure our borders and we're capitalists and we're going to bring back American jobs, I'm like, OK, it's, I'm not surprised people like that messaging. It's populist messaging. It's what Donald Trump was saying. Maybe now the Democrats are finally realizing Trump's policies were good. His attitude was bad. And maybe if you bring about those policies, people might actually choose to vote for you. The problem, I would never vote for these warmonger psychopaths. But let's break down the full context as to what we got here. The Daily Wire says Joe Biden so too got the lowest ratings for first official address in 30 years. Factually true. And it is my personal analysis that the Internet plays a role in this. But again, that is personal analysis. What the Daily Wire has presented here is factually correct. They write, someone should tell Joe Biden's chief of staff, Ron Klain, who falsely claimed 78% of American voters approved of President Biden's State of the Union address Tuesday night, that Biden's address garnered the lowest ratings for a president's first official State of the Union in 30 years. Quote, more than 38 million Americans tuned into President Biden's State of the Union address on Monday, on Tuesday, sorry, the lowest viewing figures for commander in chief's first SOTU in at least 30 years, the New York Post reported. According to Nielsen Media Research, approximately 27.4 million households watched Biden's hour-long address live on 16 different networks for a 22.4 rating. Moving from most recent State of the Union address forward uh, toward the past, President Trump's grabbed to 26.9. And they're going to say 45.5 million viewers. President Obama had 48. George W. Bush had 51.8. I think it's fair to point out what is precipitating this gradual decline? Well, it's not partisanship. If George W. Bush got less than, you know, uh, got a certain number, less than Bill Clinton, and then Obama got less than Bush, and then Trump got less than Obama, it's the internet, man. So when Donald Trump came out, and uh, I believe it was Sean Spicer, and said, we had the mo most watched inauguration in history or something like that, the media, uh, uh, the, the establishment media started showing this like half empty National Mall saying Trump's lying, Spicer's lying. And I'm like, he didn't say on the ground at there. Was he referring to online streaming? Because if that's true, like if he was referring to streaming, and I think he was, yeah, he probably had the most viewed inauguration in history. And I think it's fair to say if we are going to factor in internet in this, then I think Joe Biden may have gotten a lot of viewers, maybe not more than Trump, to be completely honest, because people are obsessed with him. I'll give you an example. I like showing people this. Um, there's this guy who made cover songs featuring Donald Trump. So he sings like uh, um, Bl uh, Blinding Lights by The Weeknd. But it's Trump's it's clips of Trump saying words auto tuned to the song. His version of Havana has one hundred and thirty million views. 
Now, since Trump left office, he's done some songs about Joe Biden singing, and it doesn't really get it because people were obsessed with Donald Trump. They love him or hate him. I think Joe Biden probably got more than just, you know, these 30 some odd, 38 million. But I still think Trump probably got more in the long run. So it is fair to say, in my opinion, just assessing the, the, the data here, Biden probably had a miserable State of the Union. I mean, we, we almost didn't even want to watch it, but we did. They say, although Biden gave a State of the Union address last April, he had not served in office a full year. So that address is not considered an official State of the Union address. It received a paltry 16.5 rate with like 27 million viewers. Wow. The idea of not calling the first address the State of the Union is a relatively new practice in American history. ABC explains the Congressional Research Service stated the past seven presidents have chosen not to give an official State of the Union address the year they were first inaugurated, having just previously delivered an inaugural address. It continued. In each instance, their first speech to a joint session of Congress closely followed their inauguration, but was not officially categorized as a State of the Union message. On Tuesday night, following President Biden's State of the Union speech, Klain boasted that according to a CBS News poll, 78% of voters approved of the speech. Look at this. 78% of voters approved of POTUS, blah, blah, blah. Okay. In his haste to celebrate what he thought was a moment of triumph, Klain neglected to mention the true stat. CBS News reported that it wasn't 78% of voters but 78% of people who watched the speech. So maybe not even voters. CBS News has admit, admitted, as we've seen with previous presidents, State of the Union speeches, those who watch tonight are more likely to be from the president's own political party, boosting approval of the speech. As the leftist site Vox wrote in 2019, generally, a greater proportion of people who watch the State of the Union address tend to be from the president's party. I think it was fairly obvious, right? That that would be the case. You know what? I'm willing to bet people who aren't Democrats, independents, conservatives, etc., this big plethora of freedom-loving individuals, well, I'm willing to bet they watch something else. First, let's just say this. I, I don't believe Nielsen is factoring in online views. It's just talking about networks, so 16 different networks. Okay, well, what about the White House website? The White House with 1.94 million subs got 1.8 million views on their live stream. And it's currently unlisted. I mean, that's massive. This means the White House did not post this to their own subscribers and still got nearly 2 million views. Well, that bumps Joe Biden's viewership up to about 40 million, right? What about Steven Crowder? 1.2 million views. Okay, now Biden's up to about 41.2 million views. And then we can throw in the good old Timcast IRL show, just over, just over 700,000. Let's just round it up and say that puts Joe Biden around 42. And I'm not factoring in any of the other live streams or shows that did something similar. And they did. And I suppose it's fair to say you can't count the, uh, uh, you know, Crowder or, or, or uh, Timcast IRL as actual viewership for Joe Biden because we were interrupting, we were laughing, we were making fun of him and we were drinking. But I can say this. As far as the poll goes, this is important. If viewers of Crowder, who naturally tend away from Joe Biden, and viewers of IRL tend away from Joe Biden, these are people who are going to watch the State of the Union and say, we don't like it. But if they don't watch it because they'd rather watch me hang out with a bunch of people and see Lauren Southern get drunk, well, then they're not really having watched the State of the Union and they're not participating in the polls, are they? Yeah, they're not. When it comes to this polling, I think it's fair to say they're probably not polling people like us, making phone calls. Who are they calling online polls? It's going to be a bunch of Democrats who are supporting this. And I think when you look at the actual when you look at the actual uh, polling data, you can clearly see as of right now, independent voters ain't have none of it. But let's do this. I've got civics pulled up. And the reason I do is because it's relatively real time, right? They go up uh, uh, as of yesterday. They have uh, up to date polling. So civics is constantly in the cycle. There are many, many polling agencies that are going to poll a week. They're going to say from the start of this State of the Union to like three days after. Those will probably come out in the next week, maybe two weeks. Civics is just real time tracking. So we can see that the, his approval rating hasn't changed among independents. 24 percent approval, 64 percent disapproval going back over a week. It does not seem the State of the Union has moved the needle at all. Let's take a look at Republicans, and we can see here, Republicans just hate Joe Biden. And it ain't going to change. I don't know how much worse it could get. But again, since Joe Biden gave his speech, no movement. Now, the question is, 
Democrats. And we do see a little uptick, but not since he gave the State of the Union address. Since the invasion of Ukraine, there's been a tiny uptick, but not even enough to move his approval rating one point. Disapproval still remains at 12% among Democrats. Approval for Joe Biden is at 73% and has been hanging out there since just about February 22nd, when it hit 73%, went up a little bit. The State of the Union has not moved the needle. So this was, uh, we're we're going on just about uh, two or three days ago. And so far, the real-time tracking from civics has shown nobody seems to have have, have likened, uh, warmed up to Joe Biden. And I think it's fair to point out, I don't see why Democrats would agree with MAGA light or diet MAGA. Something Seamus was saying. Uh, I think it was Seamus. He's not going to get leftist supporters from the speech. And Republicans and libertarian types already don't like him and won't believe him. So what's the point of playing up to MAGA light? Take a look at this from Yahoo News. Biden uses State of the Union to rebrand dead Build Back Better plan. Oh, please. Joe Biden basically just word vomited out some version of MAGA, but I, I, I've called it great value MAGA, but I feel that's an insult to great value, which actually is a great value. That's the Walmart brand, by the way. I remember back when I was a kid, we had a, a, a supermarket called Dominic's. Do you guys know about Dominic's? No? Well, we had Dominic's. And it was always funny because on the shelf, they would have canned goods and the label would be yellow with like bullet font type that would just say like beans on it. That's what I view Joe Biden as. Imagine that. It's, uh, maybe that was like the store brand, how they used to do it. Maybe that was just Dominic's. I don't know. Maybe it was cheaper to do a yellow label and just boom, beans. So like you'd find like a can of st- the store brand chili and it was just like a yellow, it was just like a yellow label, all yellow. And it would just say chili on it. And that was it. Maybe they had to add graphics or whatever. Great value looks like it's a, a brand, but it's the Walmart brand or whatever. Great value. Joe Biden is less than great value. Joe Biden is like going to one of those knockoff stores where they have like the the X spider mens and it's like a lightsaber wielding Spider-Man toy. You've ever seen those absurd foreign counterfeit knockoff things? That's what this was. He's trying. But I don't see how you as a president could come out and say in your campaign, when you're when you're running for office on the debates, we're going we're gonna to put a moratorium on deportations. We're going to decriminalize border crossings and then come out a year later and be like, we got to secure the border. You think I'm going to believe you? You think you're going to convince me? Yo, I tell you this. If you come out and tell me that you want a moratorium on deportations, I say, okay, thank you for telling me your position. I disagree with it. If you then give me a year of an unchecked southern border, I'll say, I really find this president to be unfavorable and doing a bad job. And then when you come out and say, I want to secure the border, you know what you're telling me? One, you're a liar. And two, you're you're extremely bad at your job. Because if you were being sincere that you want to secure the border and the border is this bad, yo, you're either full of it, you're either miserable at your job, or worse, both. And that's what I take away from Joe Biden and his State of the Union address. So come to me and tell me 78% of voters appreciate or approve of what Joe Biden is doing. And I go, Bleh. nice try. I can read. I have Google. I know you're lying. But you know what? Unfortunately, there's probably a lot of people who believe it and are like, I want, I want to be a part of the 78% that approve of Joe Biden. Let me say it again. MAGA light. Some people might buy into it. They hear that and they say, I like the idea of securing our borders and doing these things. And I can totally respect that. I, I, my favorite moment was when Joe Biden, he was, he was talking about um, uh, the Supreme Court justice he's nominated and, uh, and how she's like, you know, uh, um, she's been endorsed by the fraternal order of the police. And then all of a sudden he goes, and so we got to secure our borders. And I'm just like, wait, what? And then Lauren just starts screaming, based. <laughs> I thought that was great. I was like, no, no, don't praise the man. But I I love it because technically, yeah, like Joe Biden now reversing course. With respect, I will say this. Joe Biden coming out and pushing back on leftist narratives, a good thing. 
a good thing. If we can come out and be like, we need to secure the border. Hey, maybe bollard fencing is a good idea. Maybe Trump was doing a good job. And Joe Biden now has to come out and push that same message because it's popular. We're winning. Now, I don't think we're winning with Joe Biden. Vote him out. But yo, we have gotten Joe Biden to move from moratorium and basically open borders all the way to publicly declaring the need to secure the borders. Is he doing it? No. Is he trying to pull our border guards off the borders and send them to Poland? Yes. Is that bad? Of course it is. But we won on messaging, which means the shift in culture is occurring. And those of us who believe in, I don't know, sound domestic policy are winning. I'm not confident that, that, that we come out of this with honesty and a good leader. People might just recoil and go for someone totally off the, uh, you know, off the rails in the next four or eight years. Maybe Donald Trump gets back in because Joe Biden's basically campaigning for Trump. I'll put it this way. If Joe Biden comes out and says, yeah, I'm a capitalist and we got to secure the borders. Would you vote for him? Or you get Donald Trump who's like, not only am I a capitalist, I'm a billionaire. Well, that was like a weird Bernie thing I just did. Billionaires. But if Donald Trump came out and was like, I am a billionaire and a capitalist. I am the person who can lead this country back to a good economy. Some people don't think so. I can't actually impersonate Trump very well, so I just pretend to be Seamus from Freedom Tunes. I impersonate him. But if Donald Trump came out and said, I'm the guy who wanted to secure the border in the first place, you know I'll do a better job because I'll fight for it. Not only am I a capitalist, I'm a billionaire. If this is the messaging that Joe Biden wants to go with, then you're, you're, you have an option between choosing Donald Trump, the cream of the crop, the top of the top with a really bad attitude, or Sleepy Joe. Sleepy Joe. Who would you pick? It's like, dude, I don't want Sleepy Joe to be the guy who's going to do those things I like. You also had Joe Biden come out and say, fund the police. It's like, yo, Donald Trump was supporting the police from the get-go. If you're really going with this narrative, you're just propping up a Donald Trump 2024 victory. Now, I love this. I pulled up an article from The Economist. Much so, too, about nothing. The Economist writes, although never regarded as a gifted orator, Mr. Biden was in especially poor form. At times, stumbling through both his scripted lines and ad-libs, he spoke of the Iranian people when he met the Ukrainians. You don't know that. You don't know that. And confused the word vaccine for virus. He's done that before. After the perfunctory closing line, may God protect our troops, the president felt compelled to shout a mystifying postscript into his microphone. Go get him. Or perhaps go get him. Who? Who does him or them refer to? I don't know. He just yelled out, go get him. Let's say he meant them. Who? Who? The president was strongest at the start of his speech, denouncing Vladimir Putin's war in stark terms and leading, in the, leading the assembly in a standing ovation for the Ukrainian ambassador. When, dicta when dictators do not pay a price for their aggression, they cause more chaos. There was chest thumping over the success of the severe, econo severe economic sanctions that America and its allies have imposed on Russia, warmly received by both members of the party uh, par of parties. He has no idea what's coming, Mr. Biden said of Putin. Unusually for any big political question, Americans of all partisan stripes are in broad agreement with the president's strategy. Surveys taken by YouGov for The Economist after Mr. Putin launched his invasion show that sizable majorities of Democrats, Republicans and independents support imposing economic sanctions and dispatching weapons to Ukraine. That's a fair point. I don't know about banning Russian civilians from like social media or uh, uh, kicking Lee Camp off of Spotify for his personal podcast. That's weird. But like, uh, uh, I'm not a fan of kicking, uh, of sanctioning Russia in terms of SWIFT. I do think there can be some sanctions. So um, a lot of this has to do with uh, natural gas. Maybe there's a, uh, maybe the US and Germany should stop buying it. No, that's not the sanctions they're going for, which makes me question what they're doing. You know, they don't want to actually engage in a real conflict. They're going to say, there were signs of cooling relations between the Democratic Party's progressive and moderate factions. Having added progressive phraseology like equity and environmental justice to his administrative and personal lexicon, Mr. Biden is now pointedly distancing himself from his party's leftist flank. The answer is not to defund the police, he said. The answer is to fund the police. He's correct. I agree. That is true. True statement. If you've got a problem with cops, cops need better funding, better pay, better uh, cops need better everything. I'm not a fan of corrupt cops blindly following orders. We need some way to solve for that. 
But if we're talking about police brutality, then police need more units, better technology, better tools, better weapons, better training, more money. Here's what I mean. You've got a call of uh, domestic abuse. Then you send out cops with the right tools to deal with domestic abuse, which could include lethal force. You've got calls of a um, man sitting in the sidewalk who seems to be mentally disturbed. Okay. Well, in my opinion here, you dispatch community relations followed by patrol with lethal force. Perhaps the community liaison could be armed with less lethals followed by. So, so there's always there's, there's there should be like a, a, a an escalation process. I think we need police officers who respond to certain calls that are uh, community uh, community enforcement like they do in, in New York or something like that. Now, I don't mean like social workers. That's kind of absurd. No, I think the police should have some arms of some sort. But uh, we don't need we don't need to be dispatching cops with rifles or handguns to a call that's like a trespass in a grocery store. That being said, I believe these cops should have vehicles that have weapons in them. To put it simply, um, for the lowest of low tier calls, you know, like a fender bender or something like that, I think we'd be better served if officers were approaching these situations, specifically highlighting a specific unit and if their weapons were not on their person. And that is to say, if the police officers believe in any way they are entering a situation where their life is threatened, life is threatened, they then take weapons before they go out. What I mean is, I think there are certain circumstances where we can de-escalate tensions by having uh, more units. We have SWAT, special weapons and tactics. Okay. We have um, police officers who are not SWAT, but still will come out with rifles and body armor. We have your standard, you know, beat cops and patrol officers. They have their guns. I just think maybe we add something, more money, more training, and someone calls in like a, 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 a Neighbors are, are arguing with each other or someone saying someone shoplifted. You don't need, you know, someone can go to a grocery store without wearing a bulletproof vest and a gun. I'm not saying that this nece that necessarily is a solution to all of those issues. I just think it may be a grain of sand dropped in the heap of the right direction. Something to that effect. And maybe it's maybe, maybe that's overly simplistic. What I mean to say is maybe the solution is just more police units with more specialized tools, more options for subduing threats. I think that would be a good idea. I also think we need to have harsh civilian oversight to prevent police from violating people's rights, as we've seen throughout the COVID pandemic. That being said, there is, in my opinion, very little that we get along with, uh, uh, we, get, we get along over in this country between left and right. And I honestly don't believe that there's any real solution, to be honest. Um, maybe that's, I don't know if it's a bad thing or a good thing. That's not really what I'm trying to say. But, uh, you know, I'll give you an example. Uh, Jack Posobiec tweeted out that Disney Plus had removed Anastasia. I saw it. Didn't think too much about it, but kind of felt like, no. So I responded with, LOLOL, dot, 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 no way. That was my intention. It wasn't meant to be a grand statement. It wasn't meant to be overtly like, this is false or this is true. It was meant more of a like, come on. Like, is that really true? No way. What did we get? A CNN reporter took that tweet and claimed that I was supporting a narrative that Disney removed a movie that was not a Disney movie because of the Ukraine war. And I'm just like, dude, I literally said no way. I didn't put no way, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, like no way, which doesn't even make sense in this context. And the argument now is, well, you, you were trying to play both sides. And I'm like, are you implying that I was unsure and possibly doubted the story? I digress. This one really frustrates me because it was a CNN reporter who did it. And I'm not a fan of CNN. The reporter agreed and said, uh, I DM'd him and he was like, OK, I'll, I'll add your thoughts to this. And I'm just like, dude, if I'm saying something that can be interpreted as doubt, you need only ask. And that's my point. I was doubting the story. The issue here is the CNN reporter took the worst possible interpretation added the words Ukraine, which neither of us said. Jack Posobiec didn't say it, neither did I. Jack just said, we are a stupid people, in reference to a story about it being removed. Turns out it was removed or something over a contract, but I don't know or care, because I didn't even say anything about it. I just said, no way. My thought process was, no one removed Anastasia, whatever. The, 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 the article link from, from Jack was like Disney plus informer. I was like, it's not even, it doesn't even look real. I just put, no way. 
But we live in a world where it's tribal, meaning CNN's reporter has to take the worst possible interpretation so that he can rally his followers to hate me instead of simply DMing me and being like, you know, hey, this is not a true story. And I would have responded with, yeah, I didn't think it was, which is why I said, no way. I thought it sounded a bit ridiculous. And then he could have said, okay. Instead, he quote tweeted me. That's the name of the game. It's, and you know what? This is mostly indicative of the establishment left. Some people on the right do it, but not prominent individuals. Now, I'll say this to the Daily Wire. I think their article should have included that internet plays a role in the State of the Union ratings, but, you know, whatever. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcast. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.